The year is 2004. I'm 13 years old and summer vacation has just started. With the money I've saved up, I head to one of the local game shops, hoping to pick up a PS2 title that I can play throughout my break. Back then I had very little money, so I had to be a lot more careful in what games I got, as I'd be lucky to get a new one like twice a year. Scanning the aisles, my eyes locked on the cover of a particular game that had a pretty unique art style, a very anime art style. The name of this game was Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome to the Lion's Lounge. Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, or as it's originally known in Japan, Breath of Fire 5 Dragon Quarter, was the fifth entry in the Breath of Fire series. And up until this title, the games were pretty typical turn-based RPGs. And I played a bit of 2 and 3, but never really got into them. Honestly, what really sold me on this game was the box cover and the price. It was only like $20 when I grabbed it, and I figured if anything, I'd get a lot of playtime out of it. Lo and behold, the gameplay and story far exceeded my expectations. One thing I want to quickly touch on before diving headfirst into this game is while it did sell relatively well in Japan when it released in 2002, in the US it more or less bombed. The main reason for this being its highly controversial combat system. And this in turn has led to the series to fall to the wayside, with Breath of Fire 6 a mobile game releasing and immediately failing in 2016. And I think this is kind of sad. See, unlike the previous titles in the series, Dragon Quarter was not a traditional turn-based RPG. Rather, it's far more tactical in that each character you control in your party has a certain amount of action points, or AP, they receive each turn that can be spent on movement or attacks. Any unspent points roll over to the next turn, allowing you multiple avenues to string together more powerful attacks. Similar to Dragon Quest, combat starts after the first strike, wherein whoever attacked first receives an extra turn. Another interesting tactic is that you can throw items, such as bombs, outside of battle and trigger them while fighting for massive payoff. Lastly is the most important feature, the D-meter. This is something you obtain early on in the game that you carry with you to the end. At any time while fighting, you can have the main character transform into a nearly invincible dragon hybrid, that deals an incredible amount of damage. And with each consecutive attack, the damage is multiplied. So it's extremely overpowered. However, this comes at a huge cost. Once the D-meter hits 100%, it's game over. And you have only two options from here. Continue from the last save point, or start the game from the beginning, carrying over all your weapons, armor, and skills you've received during the playthrough. There's no way to lower the D-meter, and it even increases by a small percentage with each step you take outside of battle. So it's a huge risk reward strategy. But it's this part of the game that while I initially found it annoying, I grew to really like it, especially in how the developers tied it into the overall narrative. In Dragon Quarter, humanity has migrated underground as the air above became so polluted centuries before that it's impossible to survive in. You play as the protagonist, Ryu. He's a low ranking grunt in the Rangers, a military force led by the shadowy overseers, the Regents. On a routine mission though, you come into contact with a winged young girl named Nina, and a rebel fighter, Lin, and find that your organization wants to capture and use Nina for a sinister purpose tied into her ability to purify air, the result of which has caused her body to start failing. And so you decide to fight your way to the surface with the regents attempting to stop you, as well as your former friend Bosch, who wants to bring you in himself to improve his social standing. And it's here that this bumps up against one of the major themes of the game, class. Each individual upon birth is given a D ratio, a ranking that's a fraction of one, with the closer to one you get, the higher your social class. Ryu's is one over 8192, an extremely low ranking that is essentially destined to always be a grunt, whereas Bosch's is one over 64. But what's really interesting is that this rating actually serves as the likelihood of being able to fuse with a dragon, with the highest rating being one over four, hence the subtitle Dragon Quarter. And to everyone's amazement, despite Ryu's extremely low D ratio, he successfully bonds with one, causing the regents to fear a prophecy is coming to fruition. One that states a boy will become a dragon, and humanity will once again see the sky. Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter is honestly a hidden gem of a game that I'd wish had gotten more attention. It's one I clocked a boatload of time into when I was younger, and the fact that you can carry over all your gear and skills across multiple playthroughs as well as new scenes that are unlocked to further flesh out the characters' backstories, adds a great deal of replayability. Honestly, I don't expect this video to convince Capcom to make a sequel to the Breath of Fire games, but I hope it at least helps you see why I think it's an amazing game. And if you feel like dusting off your PS4 and can grab a copy, 
I highly recommend you give this title a try. With that long rant out of the way, it's that time again to make a drink. And in theme with the Breath of Fire series, I need to make a flamed cocktail. This one is called the D-Breath, named after one of the primary abilities that you can use in the game when you transform into a dragon. Essentially, this is an extra spicy flamed Moscow mule. So you're gonna build this one in the glass, so first take a highball and crack some ice into it. Now, normally I'll make my juices outside the video, but in this case, I wanna use the discarded husk. So take a fresh lime, and juice half an ounce or 15 milliliters. Next, add a quarter ounce or seven and a half milliliters of curacao or triple sec. Then an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters of vodka. I'm specifically using 42 below vodka, which is made in New Zealand from volcanic spring. Then for some extra spice, add three to five drops of Tabasco sauce. And lastly, you're gonna top this up with some ginger beer, but leave a little room on the top so that you can put that lime wheel. Give it a quick stir to combine. Now, I always say this last part is optional, so if you're gonna do it, make sure you be very careful. Please be safe, have a fire extinguisher handy. So take your discarded lime husk and drop it in the glass. Then add two sugar cubes. Using some 151 rum, soak the sugar cubes. And now for the part you've all been waiting for. Let's light this thing. Initially, this may be hard to see, but just use some cinnamon and the flame will shoot right up. Once you're done, be sure to blow it out. And there you have the deep breath. Cheers. So yeah, extra spicy Moscow Mule was pretty much on point. It's not overly hot. It's kind of just a kick that you get that quickly falls away to the sweetness and tartness from the lime juice and the curacao. Like most vodka, this doesn't really have too much taste to it. It kind of just adds a little more power to the drink. What I also like is that over time, the cinnamon and the sugar will dissolve into the drink and add a little bit more complexity to it. Today we made the D breath from Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, a variation on the Moscow Mule. If you like this video and wanna see more, please like and subscribe. If you have any cocktails you'd like me to make from your favorite video games or shows, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see what I make outside this channel, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Space Lion. But thank you so much for stopping by the Lion's Lounge. I'm Mike and I hope to see you next time.